So you want to study geology. You've looked at the university syllabus and you've seen that geology is the science that requires the least amount of maths, and that seems like an attractive option. Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Let's look at what makes a good geologist and see if you're a good fit for that career. There were some 200 students in the first geology lecture that I attended at university. By the time I graduated, there were just 12 survivors. So if you don't want to waste a bunch of time studying for the wrong career, then listen up. Contrary to popular belief, geologists are scientists. And if you want to be a good one, you'll need to be good at science. That means collecting data, compiling it, coming up with ideas to explain it, and presenting those ideas to others. It's not talent. Geology is actually one of the most difficult sciences because the data you have to work with is often incomplete and inconsistent. So you'll need a good dose of imagination to come up with a rational explanation. Most of all, you'll need to enjoy the process. If discovering answers for difficult questions is a fun thing for you, then work will seem like play. You're almost always working with a limited set of resources, a scattered set of facts that are unrelated and often unreliable. You'll come up with a theory and it'll be proven wrong on a regular basis. If you can't accept being proven wrong on a regular basis, then you probably should think about a different career because that happens all the time in this industry and you have to be able to get over it and move on. There are lots of branches of geology, and some of them involve a lot of field work, others are done entirely indoors. I'm gonna talk about mineral exploration geology, since that's what I do. The job of a mineral exploration geologist is to find new mineral deposits that will become the mines of tomorrow. I often liken exploration geology to cold case investigation. The thing you're looking for happened a long time ago, most of the facts have been lost or destroyed or covered up. You develop a list of suspects and some of them might look pretty good for a while, but then a single fact can give them a concrete alibi and knock them out of the race. Sometimes it can take years and multiple groups of people working on the same thing before someone cracks the case. But if you're that person that cracks the case, the feeling of that discovery is just incomparable. That's why I do this job, and that's why I go into the bush every day, because it never gets old. That thrill of discovery just never gets old. If you choose geology at university, you'll study basic science prerequisites, physics, chemistry, and maths, along with the geology subjects. You don't have to be a numbers nerd to graduate as a geologist, but having those basic science subjects under your belt will give you a much better understanding of the processes that make the rocks you study. Having an affinity for computers will also help you when you're compiling, interpreting and presenting the data you collect. Modern day exploration geologists have access to a staggering array of data from automated machines, but field boots are still the most effective tool for interpreting that data so you'll need to enjoy working outdoors. You get to go to some really wild and interesting places that other people will have to pay stupid amounts of money to go and do. You're getting paid to do it. That's pretty hard to beat in my book. Now, sometimes you're gonna to go to places that are not so nice, but that's a harsh reality of life. Humans want the things that geologists bring, the gold, the lead, the zinc, the silver, all those things, but nobody wants a mine in their backyard. So the bottom line is exploration usually gets done in some of the less pleasant places where people don't choose to live. But some of those less pleasant places are actually really interesting places to work. At the pointy end of exploration geology, you can often be working in remote areas, sometimes on your own, with limited resources and in difficult conditions. That's not an easy job and it's only suited to certain types of people. You need to be independent minded, you need to be resourceful and you need to enjoy being in that kind of difficult situation. And there certainly is enjoyment when you get through it and 
particularly when you discover something. But you don't have to discover a new mineral deposit every day. In fact, there's plenty of enjoyment in just discovering little things, small pieces of information that might seem unrelated at the time, but when you put them together, you get part of a story, a piece of the jigsaw. Every time you get one of those little pieces of the jigsaw, there's real pleasure in putting it in and seeing another little part of the picture. Geologists that actually discover new mineral deposits are a pretty rare breed, and you'll often find that those people have not only discovered one, but many. There's a certain type of people that just get that, and they're really good at what they do, and they do it again and again. If you've got the right combination of things, that can be you. So, in short, if you love working outdoors, you have a curious mind, and you get a thrill out of discovering new things, then exploration geology might be the career for you. If your childhood heroes were Sherlock Holmes, Indiana Jones and Einstein, you might be one of the rare breed of ore finders that makes a habit of finding new deposits.